In this video, we're going to talk about Newman projections and how we use them to show rotation about carbon-carbon single bonds. Here's an explanation of how to draw a Newman projection. The Newman projection represents the orientation about a single bond. As you see in the description here, the bond that we're looking at is not actually shown in the Newman projection. It's hiding back there somewhere. In the Newman projection, the back carbon here, you can't see either. You can only see the red carbon, which is that one right there. As you rotate the molecule towards the front, in the back you should have the X groups in black, which are over here, and then attached to the front carbon, you have the Y groups in red, which are attached to that front carbon. In this model, you can see that as we rotate it, the Newman projection is this view right here where you can't see the back carbon or the bond that we're rotating about. You can only see the front carbon, the groups attached to the front carbon, and the groups that are attached to the back carbon. Newman projections can be staggered or eclipsed. Eclipsed Newman projections are where the groups are right on top of each other. If you were looking at a real model of this molecule, the front chlorine would eclipse or cover up the back chlorine, and then the front hydrogens here would eclipse or cover up the back hydrogens. So this first example we consider to be eclipsed. As we rotate the groups a little bit, you can see that we can get to a staggered example. I'm going to draw in the chlorine and the hydrogens on front, and the front carbon here is the same, but the back carbon, you can see that the chlorine was rotated 60 degrees from its original position. So now I'll have a chlorine here and hydrogens down here. This represents a staggered conformation, and the staggered conformation is where we have the maximum distance possible between all of the groups. In this last conformation here, again, the front carbon is the same, and the chlorine was rotated another 60 degrees, or 120 degrees from its initial position. So that means it would be right there. This is another eclipsed conformation. So this first one is showing zero degrees, we're rotating the chlorine 60 degrees, and then another 60 degrees to get to 120 degrees from the original position. In this model here, I'm going to rotate so we can get the end on view as you would see in a Newman projection. And this would be a staggered conformation because the groups are as far apart as possible. This would be an example of an eclipsed conformation here where you can see that the front atoms are completely blocking the back atoms. The staggered conformation is much more stable than the eclipsed conformation, which you can see in the staggered conformation is because the groups are as far apart as possible, electron repulsion is at a minimum, meaning the hydrogens associated with those groups are not bumping into each other. As you rotate so those groups are right on top of each other, the electrons that are associated with those atoms and the bonds in those atoms are now repelling each other, and that means that we have electron repulsion at a maximum. That means that the eclipsed conformation is more strained or has higher energy than the staggered conformation. Specifically, we can call this torsional strain because it is an increase in energy that arises in that eclipsed conformation. We can also refer to that as a decrease in stability that arises in the eclipsed conformation. So staggered conformations are going to be more stable and be lower in energy than eclipsed conformations. The term dihedral angle is used to explain the angle between groups or bonds in the Newman projection. You can see in this picture a molecule with two groups. When you rotate the molecule so the groups are eclipsed and in the orientation of the Newman projection, we call that a dihedral angle of zero. In this picture, we've rotated the back group 60 degrees, and so we can say that that has a dihedral angle of 60 degrees. This is a staggered conformation. We rotate a little bit more. Here's eclipsed at 120, and then another staggered at 180. You could also rotate the other way. So if we take that X group in back and rotate it towards the left, that's negative 60 degrees, and this is a staggered conformation. If we rotate it negative 120, we have another eclipsed, and negative 180 gives us another staggered. This conformation is equivalent to positive 180 over here on the right. Okay, so here's our molecule 
I don't have it perfectly eclipsed. I just have it rotated just a hair so you can see what's happening. This would be the zero degree dihedral angle. And then we rotate this way like that. That's 60. This is about 120. That would be 180. And we can go the other way as well. So this would be negative 60, negative 120, and negative 180. In this picture, you're seeing what we call conformational analysis. This conformational analysis is of ethane, which I'll draw out here. So in this picture, this hydrogen here is that one there. This hydrogen here is that one there. The front carbon is that one there. And the back carbon, we can't see. It's just hiding back there somewhere. So this first orientation is where the groups are staggered. And you can see that this is low in energy. As you rotate this hydrogen over 60 degrees, we get to an eclipse conformation that is higher in energy. We continue the rotation and bring that hydrogen up here. Again, we have a staggered conformation that is lower in energy. Then we rotate it back up to this eclipse conformation that is high in energy, then down over here to the right to a staggered conformation, continue to go down to the right to eclipsed, which is high in energy again, and then back to the original position. And now we've gone the full 360 degree rotation. In this particular case, each staggered conformation is low and equal in energy, and each eclipsed conformation is high and equal in energy. When we start adding groups to our molecule that are not hydrogens, we may end up with this concept known as steric strain. Steric strain is an increase in energy caused by repulsion between atoms or groups of atoms that aren't bonded together. You can see an excellent example of steric strain in 1,2-dibromoethane here. In this case, you can see that while we have a staggered conformation, the bromine groups are pretty close together. If you look at the space filling model, you can see that they're essentially crashing into each other when they're this close. This interaction between the two bromines is known as a Gauche interaction. In a Gauche conformation, the bulky groups are 60 degrees apart. This is a staggered conformation where you're getting some steric strain between those groups. The anti conformation is where the bulky groups are 180 degrees apart. And in this case, we have the optimum situation in terms of energy. This minimizes any steric strain associated with those groups. Here's the Gauss interaction that we saw before, where the bulky groups are 60 degrees apart. And here's the anti-conformation, where the groups are 180 degrees apart. So that means that if we have different staggered conformations of a molecule, any Gauss interactions are going to increase steric strain. And that means that in the ideal situation, we want those groups to be anti or as far apart from each other as possible. So let's look at the conformational analysis of 1,2-dibromoethane. Here's 1,2-dibromoethane. This bromine is that bromine, which is attached to the front carbon. The red bromine is this one down here, attached to the back carbon. And as you rotate that back carbon, you can see the bromine rotating around. So here we're starting out, and then we're rotating it 60 degrees, and then we're rotating it up here, and then it's going up to the top, and then down here to the right, then down a little bit more, and finally back to its initial position. In this case, now we see that all the staggered conformations are lower in energy than all the eclipse conformations, but they're no longer equal because we have these two groups. Also, all the eclipse conformations are higher in energy than all the staggered conformations, but they are also not equal in energy. The anti-conformation is the lowest in energy here. In this conformation, we have a Gauss interaction, and we also have a Gauss interaction in this conformation. So of the staggered conformations, anytime we have a Gauss interaction, these are higher in energy than anytime we have anti-conformations. Also, if we look at the eclipsed conformation, you can see that the worst one or the highest in energy is where these two groups are right on top of each other.